I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Say yes, come on. Yes, I'm a believer. Come on, say yes. Yes, I'm a believer. Say yes. Yes, I'm a believer. Come on, say yes. Yes, I'm a believer. Listen to this. I believe in Jesus Christ. He's the king of our life. From heaven he came down. For all was short of fire. I'm a believer, I'm a believer, say yes, yes, yes I'm a believer, oh, come on, say yes, yes, yes I'm a believer, oh, say yes, yes, yes I'm a believer, oh, come on, say yes, yes, yes I'm a believer, let me say it one more time, I believe in Jesus Christ, he's a giver of our life, from heaven he came down. No, you were not there, and you don't know when or where. What the Lord has done for me, He gave me the victory. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Say yes. Yes, yes I'm a believer. Yes. Yes, I'm a believer. Any believers in the house? Come on, don't pity Patty. I said, any believers in the house that know I believe that Jesus died for me? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify his holy and righteous name. God, we invoke your presence in this place. Thank you for another Sunday to worship you. This is thy servant prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me do this real quick because I want the worship to take flight after, the, after these quick announcements. I want the worship to take flight, so... Sister Hargett, you or Sister Woody decide who's going to do y'all announcement, but let me do my announcement real quick. Uh, Shepherd's Care on the fourth Sunday, I need a Kansas City Chief. Uh, you know what y'all do? Kansas City Chief, amen, that can go on an airplane um, for my special guest on the fourth Sunday, my uncle, Dr. Donald L. Johnson from the historical Oak Grove Baptist Church has agreed to come celebrate with me. I wanted him to come on this coming Sunday, but he already had an engagement, so he's coming on the fourth Sunday to help close out my birthday celebration. Amen. Amen. And then, and then, and then, bittersweet, bittersweet. On the third Sunday, Shepherd's Care, I need y'all to give me the best going away care package you can get. 
I need you, Mount Hermon, to dig deep in your pocket because we going to send Brother Earl E.J. Johnson away from here, Mount Hermon style. Amen. He has taken a job in his home state in Florida. It's bittersweet, but on the third Sunday, we going to send him away, the Mount way. Amen. For these last two years, he has played and celebrated, brought hype to this worship, and we want to give him a going away second to none. Amen. So let's make sure we hook him up. Amen. The third, sun third Sunday, right? Third Sunday, we're going to celebrate him. Amen. Bring a special seed offering. And shepherds care, do what you do best. Amen. Sister Hargett, I saw her point to you. Amen. Let the worship presenters as we prepare to pray. Amen. Amen. This weekend is not just about me, it's about us as Christians coming together to have fun. Amen. Okay, you didn't say that like you meant it. I said it's about Christians coming together to have fun. Amen. Come on, type those names as we prepare to pray. As we go to God in prayer, go ahead and type those names. Come into this house. Come into this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Come. Come in the house. Come into this house. Come in the house. Come into this house. Come in the house. Jesus, you are welcome. Come into this house. Come on, come into this house. Come in the house. Jesus. Jesus, you are waiting. Come in the house. Healing, healing in this house. 
healing in the house. Healing in the house. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you are welcome. Healing. healing in the house. Come on, there's healing in the house. Healing in the house. Healing in the house. There's deliverance in this house. Deliverance in this house. Deliverance in the house. Jesus. Jesus, you are welcome. One more time, there's deliverance. Deliverance in the house. Deliverance. Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, you are welcome. Yeah. God, our Father, how we love to call you our Father. We just pause just to say thank you for last night lying down. Thank you for watching over us all night long. And then, Lord, right early this morning, you touched us with a finger of the divine love, saying, Servant, behold, a brand new day. Now, God, we woke up this morning, we were clothed, and we were in our right mind. We came with a mindset of worship to give you all the praise, all the glory that's due unto your name. Now, God, we know that there are many who are on our sick and our shutting list. There are many that's going through bereavement right now. And there's many in the hospital. But God, I realize we don't have to explain anything to you because you're omniscient, you're omnipresent, and you're all-knowing. But I read in your word that it says, cast your cares upon you because you first care for us. So now, God, I don't have to send you nowhere, but those that's in the hospital, would you just touch right now? Those who are going through bereavement, would you just lay your hands on them and let them know that everything is going to be all right? Those who are waiting on a decision that, to take place, would you ease their mind and let them know that this battle is not theirs, it belongs to you? For God, we just want your will to be done. And if your will is done, then we know that everything will be all right. So now, God, we ask that you just touch and move in a special way. Bless this worship experience as only you can. Bless these singers that they may sing your Zion songs. That somebody might say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Then, God, would you just bless the preach word? Because we need to hear a word from you to let us know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Would you bless everybody that's under the sound of my voice? Let them know whatever they're going through that God, you're still able to heal, deliver, and to set free. Would you just do us a favor, God, and just show us your glory today? Let us feel your Shekinah glory in this place. Let us feel the movement of you in this place that somebody who came in bound would leave healed. Somebody who came with a heavy heart would live, leave uplifted. God, we just want to feel your presence. We want to be like Moses. Just show us your Shekinah glory in this place. Let your train pass through that, that, that we don't leave the same way we came. That if we came with our hair all intact, that we'll leave with our hair messed up our makeup was get a little runny our suit would be a little sweaty because we want to feel your power we don't want to just have ritual church but we want to have a worship experience with you for that wife that's worried about her husband that husband who's worried about their wife would you let them know that you still got power to heal and to set free we love you, God. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. You get all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Lord is blessing me right now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole.
time we would see Jesus. None of me but all of you. Sir, we would see Jesus. Hide us behind the old rugged cross that the people see you and not me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Make me, mold me, Lord, hold me and control me. Is thy servant prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and hit that share button as we find ourselves in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 16 through 17. It's a lengthy passage of scripture, but let me preach it how I feel it. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Are y'all traveling with me? For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without the law to God, but under the law to Christ. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strive for the magistrate is temperate in all things. Not Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we a incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so I fight, fi so fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I kept under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway. And I want to talk about don't lose your witness. Don't lose your witness. My brothers and sisters, Sunday, April 2nd, 2000, I stood before friends, family, acquaintance, church members, and preached what is called a trial sermon. Sunday, April 2nd, 2000, I didn't ask to be called to preach. It was bestowed upon me. I didn't ask. To be a preacher, I was satisfied sitting on the front row, but it was a reward that was placed on me. 
preach my first sermon Sunday, April 2nd, 2000. One month later was the junior prom. And you know, just like every young boy, every senior or junior, you had that Betty Wright plan in your head. Tonight is the night. I make her a woman. Don't act holy on me. April 2nd, 2000, I preached my first sermon. A month later was the junior prom. April 2nd, 2000, I stood before on a family, friends, classmates, and people I didn't know to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, not knowing a month later became my junior prom. I went to the prom, and when I got to the prom, my principal said to me, they're watching you. <sighs> now, you got to know, before I was called to preach, I was at every basement house party, didn't mind doing my, my two steps and listening to some R. Kelly, but when I got to the prom, she said, they're watching you. Sunday, April 2nd, 2000, I preached my first sermon. A month later was my junior prom. I showed up to the junior prom with my high school sweetheart. We showed up there, and when we walked through the door, my principal said, they're watching you. Huh, maybe let me bring you the story, because, because everybody didn't believe that I was called to preach. Everybody remembered what I used to be. Minister Bobby Overtree, everybody wanted to bring up my past, how I acted at the parties. Everybody brought up how I used to get kicked out of class. Everybody brought up how I used to do that. But when God changed me and I preached my first Sunday, my first sermon, April 2nd, 2000, went to my junior prom, my high school principal said to me, they're watching you. I'm trying to tell somebody that when you decide to be on the Lord's side, folks are going to start watching you and I don't want you to lose your witness. I want you to know that wherever you go, people are watching you. And can I tell you, I did not go to the prom and sit on a, like a knot on the law. Yes, I got a, I danced a little bit and I did a couple of slow dance, but I set myself right back down. But hold on, there was a young lady who tried to turn everybody against me, Sister Allen, because she wanted to be a prophetess. She came to the prom with the most unholiest dress on. And so I won the crowd of those who said I wasn't called to preach because all eyes was on me how I acted at the prom. Can I tell you, there is nothing wrong with dancing, but Paul says if you cause somebody to stumble, then you lose your witness. It was nothing wrong with me going to the prom. It was nothing wrong with me dancing with my date. It was nothing wrong with me cutting the rug. But when you mess up and cause people to stumble, then you lose your witness. I'm trying to tell somebody, you better enjoy life while you can but don't you be a castaway by all the living you do make it be cause in vain can I help y'all I, I like going to concert just like anybody else because if Kim ever make it to Atlanta or Birmingham I'm going to be there on the second row but here's the thing, I won't go with y'all because I can't let y'all see how much I love Kim. Because if you see how much I love Kim, then you'll forget that I have an anointing on me and make me be a castaway. And Paul says, whatever you do, don't let your witness be done in vain. Y'all didn't come to have church with me. There's nothing wrong with you doing what you do, but the problem is you can't do it around weak-minded people. I, I got my points here. I got my points here. Look, look, Paul advised those who are more mature in the faith about how they must care about their brothers and sisters in Christ who have more tendency and conscience. We who are more mature in the faith got to be careful of the weak-minded people. Oh, I'm about to get in 
trouble. I'm about to get in trouble. Uh, 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 there's nothing wrong with you dating, but we don't need to see in the month of April, this is Bay, but turn around in July, it's a different Bay. You're going to lose your witness because in our mindset, you sleeping with Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Get your one person and sit yourself down. He says, he says, you got to be careful. I, I got to advise those who are mature enough. That's why people think I'm arrogant because, no, you are not know my personal business. You are know my professional life, but my personal life belongs to me. I wonder if he dating. If I am, it ain't your business. I wonder if he got a girlfriend. If I do, it ain't your business because Paul says you will become a castaway when they get too comfortable with you. So if you're mature enough, you got to be careful of the weak-minded people. Can I tell you the church is full of not only mature people but there's a lot of weak minded people in the church that'll take one thing and run with it. They'll take a preacher up here and call them folks a N-I-G-G-A and not mature enough to understand what they're talking about. Paul says if we're more mature we got to be careful how we live our lives. Listen to what he says. Those weaker brothers and sisters are advised concerning their growth and pastors and leaders are instructed on how to deal with the conflict that easily could arise between these groups the weaker and mature can't handle everything somebody who just joined church should not come to a church meeting that quick because if you have a good Baptist church meeting you will cause people to leave the church Y'all didn't want to y'all didn't, because that they will start asking questions like if he's the pastor, why are they fighting against the pastor? Because they don't understand that everybody who come to church don't come for the right reason. Paul, look at the Bible. Paul says, I don't come with excellently a speech, but I come with Jesus and him crucified. Paul said, I ain't the best preacher, but if you put a piece of pen and paper in my hand, I can write a whole sermon to you. Paul said, Look, I ain't even good looking. I, I don't even look all that good but because Paul said there was something in my eye and I something in my flesh and I went to Jesus three times and he kept telling me my grace is sufficient and those who are weak minded don't understand that every time you pray God will not answer every time you pray God will not do what you want him to do so we who are stronger got to help those that are weaker to mature y'all don't want to talk to me y'all don't want to talk to me but see, see but here's the problem. Here's the problem. The stronger brothers and sisters can't be too proud. I got a wee ride in my mind. Just, just because you've been in church 30 years, don't think you know church better than the weaker one. Because a baby can teach you anything. A baby will take your cell phone, download Teletubby, download TikTok, and you still trying to figure out how to put a contact in your phone because we can learn from everybody so the strong can't be too proud. Don't be too proud in your maturity. Don't flaunt your freedom. Act in love so you do not cause a weaker brother to stumble. And that's the problem we have. Those who are strong are causing the weak to stumble. This is what he says to the weaker brothers, although you may not feel the same freedom in some areas as others, take your time. I'm going to let that sit in. Because people always want to say, well, Reverend, you got so-and-so in your choir and they be at the club and? Oh, I can't even get it. Reverend, you got so-and-so on your usher board and they and? They did not be a room overnight. Ain't nobody come to talk to me. See, we got a problem because you been in church. And here, this is what Paul said. I like what Paul said because I'm, I'm preaching chapter 10 next week. I like what Paul said. Paul says the reason why the weaker are stumble is because the one who are mature ain't teaching Bible. They teaching their opinion. 
And let me tell you, like a mother told me, God can give two cents about your opinion. He only declares what's in the word of God. Paul said unto me, woe if I preach not the gospel. I can't get up here and preach the Valley Times, the Lynette Times, Jet Ebony. I got to preach the Bible. And the Bible says that the weak must embed, the strong and bear the burdens of the weak. And I know I got some weak members on here because Paul says, look, I want to give you milk, but I got it's like what you do when you, you switch your baby from milk to meat you got to put it in your mouth and chew it up and give them a little bit at a time Paul says that in the church we got to learn how to break stuff down to people he says look take your time so you, you used to go to the casino five times a month now you only go four that's progress so y'all don't want to talk to me you smoke a, a pack of cigarettes a day now you only smoke half that's progress take your time pray to God but here's the part y'all ain't gonna like don't force others to adhere to your stipulations don't force everybody to think like you to act like you and to make your sins feel like it's alright because look you will hinder other believers by making up rules and standards for how everyone ought to behave I got rewind you who think you are that will hinder other believers by making up rules and standards for how everyone ought to behave make sure your convictions are based on God's word and not on your opinion Ooh. and that's the problem we have become so opinionated that we are causing folks to stumble but girl, girl, he shouldn't be acting like that. First of all, can I tell you what sin is? Sin is anything that misses the mark of God. Have you found in the Bible where smoking is, is wrong? It ain't in there. But here's what it says. You ought to take good stewardship over what God has gave you. And since he gave you this body, you make sure you take care of this body. So if you mess around and get emphysema or lung cancer, you can't get mad at God. You did this to your own self. Ain't nobody talking to me. You mess around, get cirrhosis of the liver or liver cancer. You can't blame God because you don't want to drink a pint every day. You got to take care of your body, which Christ has given you. Can I, can I tell y'all, y'all gonna get in trouble, y'all gonna make me mad on this one, but uh, voting ain't in the Bible, but they cast lots. Y'all do know what casting lots is. They had straws, it was a gamble. Jonah, when he was on the boat, they cast lot, and Jonah lost and got thrown off. Jesus, when they cast lot over his clothes, there ain't no two thirds or two fourths of a vote or nothing. And look, it was look, if it fell on you, it fell on you. See, we can't, we mess around putting our opinions. Look at it. Huh, y'all ain't got to say it, man. I came to preach to myself this morning. Pastors and leaders, Sunday school teachers, leaders. Pastors, leaders, those who are whole position in the church teach correctly from the God's word. Oh, I came to get it, heaven. Teach correctly from God's word. I got rewind on my mind. If you don't know how to teach, remove yourself from your leadership. Because your opinion will send folks to hell quicker. I, I got it in my mind. I told y'all, teach correctly from God's word. Helping Christians understand what is right and wrong in God's eyes. That's why we can't sing every song. Uh oh, I, I got one. I got one. I got one for y'all. I'm chasing after you 
How you chasing God? Sound good. I'm chasing after you. God ain't nowhere. He everywhere. The Bible says he stands at the door and not. You ain't chasing God. God is waiting on you. Y'all got mad at me when I told y'all stop saying may the Lord watch between me and thee while they're absent. That's, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, I, I'm going to beat your tail if God don't come between us. You done tricked me. You done got over on me. You decide which way you going and I'm going to go the other way and you better pray that God don't let me meet you because if I see you, it's on and popping. We got to be careful. Oh, he picked me up out of the muck and miry clay. It's a cliche, ain't in the Bible, but out of the muck and miry clay, he has gotten you, but he ain't picked you up. Uh, I'm about to get in trouble. When praises go up, I ain't found that yet. But I did find when you pay your tithes, He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. See, there's some cliches that we've been saying, but it's not right. And we go around. The Bible says if you can't find it, stop saying it. Helping Christians understand what is right and wrong in God's eyes and helping them see they can have varieties of opinions on other issues and still be unified. We can agree to disagree. But when it comes to that B-I-B-O-D, we, 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 got to, we got to stand on that one. I, I don't care how you feel about this, how you feel about that, but when it comes to the word of God and you read it plain as the word of God, the Bible still stands. He says, don't allow potential problems get out of hands causing splits and division. This is what he says in verse number 16. Y'all at verse number 16? Because he's, he's talking to me here and I'm, I got to talk to you. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Y'all see that? For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Preaching the gospel was Paul's gift and calling. He said he could not stop preaching if he wanted to. Somebody asked me, well, well how can I understand what's my, my gift? It's something you learn to do every time. Can I, can I, can I help you? There are three times a preacher really want to preach. It's when it's his turn, when a preacher preached, and when a preacher didn't preach. Carl, you would want to sing if somebody was singing one of the songs you lead and they ain't singing right. You would want to get up there and grab the mic because singing is in you. Okay, if you're a real teacher, and somebody else is teaching the Bible and they ain't teaching it right you preaching in your seat wanting to get up and say I hear what you're saying but let's, let's look at the text the right way Paul says if I wanted to stop preaching I couldn't why, why you think he got in trouble so many times because he what kept on preaching he was shipwrecked he was beaten he was left for dead he was let down in a basket they did all these things to him but Paul said I still preach Jesus and him crucified and that's why every Sunday even with my back hurting I'm still standing up here declaring the word of God because even if I wanted to throw in the towel I couldn't Now, I'm going to retire from pastoring, but I can't retire from preaching. Come on, talk to me if you can. I, I'm not 
going to die out in the pulpit because I'm going to live my best life like everybody else. But every chance I get, if somebody say, can you come declare the word of God? I got to stand up boldly and say one Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died. But early Sunday morning, got up with all power in his hand. Paul says, I can't do it. If I wanted to stop preaching, I couldn't do it. He was driven by the desire to do what God wanted by using his gift for God's glory. And my question to you is, what gift are you using for God's glory? A lot of us are sitting on our gifts. You ain't got to say nothing. And, and it is true if you don't use it you're going to lose it and Paul says to me woe is me if I preach not the gospel but what is God saying to you woe if you, if you don't sing if you don't become a doorkeeper you don't become an intercessor cause ain't nobody talking to me what is God saying to you that you not that you come to church every Sunday to sit on your blessed assurance but you come to church to worship him and what gift does God have for you oh I'm gonna get in trouble I ain't come to hit nobody but I ain't come to miss nobody either these singers shouldn't have to sing every other Sunday some of y'all can sing and y'all go to the Walmart y'all been to the casino y'all been everywhere else but you don't want to sing for God and God gonna turn around and make it that you can't sing It ought to be your dry. Okay, y'all, y'all don't like that. But I, I, got, I got five things for y'all. Paul gave several important principles for ministry. I got five of them. Y'all ready? Here it is. Number one, find common ground with those you contact. That means I need to find a preacher who's further along than me to pull me up. Y'all ain't talking to me today. See, we want to hang with people that's on our level, but God is calling us to go higher. So that means I need somebody who I look to as a mentor who's been preaching longer than me, pastoring longer than me to tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly and push me along the way. And Paul is saying to us, you need to get around somebody that you can shadow follow. You need to get around somebody that you can look up to and they pull you up. They ain't going to agree with all your wrong. They ain't going to agree with everything you mess up on. They're going to pull you by your coat tell and say get it together they're going to tell you you better than this get yourself together Paul says find you somebody that you can be in contact with uh oh about to get in trouble number two avoid a know it all attitude If you know everything about everything, you won't know nothing. They, they, they tell me, Reverend, you're a jack of all trades. And I say, no, but I'm a master of none. Because I realized I didn't know how to cut grass until I started hanging around one. I thought I, I thought I could cut grass. I mean, I, in, in Michigan, I had to push lime more. I was cutting grass, and, and, and I was just cutting grass. But when I got around him, Deacon Dawson, he said, nope, that ain't how you do it. You want to cut the grass, and you want to push, keep pushing the grass. So don't you go up this way and then come back this way. No, go up that way, come back this way, so you can keep pushing the grass towards this way so that the, the seed in the grass can get on those dead spots. I thought I knew how to cut grass but I learned I didn't know how to cut grass I was going to save this point for Father's Day but, but, but I got to use it because I just mentioned it huh so we were, we were trying to cut grass and the lawnmower didn't work and we tried everything and Warren said this let me call my daddy 
When you don't know everything, call your daddy. When you can't get a prayer through, call your daddy. When you seem like everything, you got to learn how to call your daddy. Don't have a know-it-all attitude. Find you somebody you can call. Can I tell you, I got some preachers that I can call up and say, Doc, I don't understand this. And they'll say, hold on, Johnson. Let me pull my car over. Well, I'll call you when I get to the office and we'll work this thing out together. Avoid having the know-it-all attitude and get around somebody you can talk to. Uh-oh. 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 Number three. Make others feel accepted. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We, we had this funeral. Y'all heard me say it before when I'm saying it again. We had this funeral, and the, the chief usher at this funeral pulled up. Now, let me say this, whenever we go back to doing funerals inside the church, can I put a pin? There's a difference between Sunday morning and funeral service. What we do on Sunday morning, we don't do on funerals. So the parking lot is fair game when it comes to funerals. Well, you can't park here, you can't do this, you can't do this. Dude, we got a family. Now let me just give y'all a snippet. Deacon Lyons, they made the family park at the Bournemouth and walk to the church. Can't, you got to make people feel accepted. During this pandemic, we got ushers on the door. And they can't go back to how they ushered in 2019. They got to go back how I told them to do it. Well, well, I normally sit here. It don't work like that no more. We got rules. We got regulations. We, we are doing stuff differently now because we are in a pandemic and we want everybody to feel accepted when they come to church. I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm hit it. So they made the family park at the Bournemouth, walk to the church, and then tell them, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. My mama laying up there. And if you say the wrong thing, so y'all fake and phony. We got to make people who don't look like us. Don't come to church like us. Don't dress like us. Feel accepted. Paul says if you don't know how to make them feel accepted, then all your witness is out of vain. I don't care how long you've been an usher. If you if somebody come up in here and you got a nasty attitude, your usher witness is gone. Your deacon witness is gone. Your church witness is gone. Because the only thing they can think about, I tried to come to church to hear a word from the Lord and Miss Nasty this or Mr. Nasty that made me feel uncomfortable. And you wonder why people ain't coming to church. We don't make them feel accepted. I got Bible to I got Bible to back me up because y'all looking at me in this tone. Look at verses 22 and 23. Look what Paul says. To the weak I became as weak. I got on their level to make them feel special. Paul knew 13 different languages set at the feet of Gamaliel did all this stuff but when he met somebody who didn't know Jesus like him he began to talk to them on their level sometimes you got to take your title off and get down with them folks sometimes you got to have fun with these kids sometimes you got to let them know that serving the Lord is fun okay okay uh, Friday I took I took uh Ashley Furniture workers from Montgomery and Prattville up to Birmingham to Top Golf. And, and so uh, it was about 20 of them 
on my bus and and you know they came Mr. Bus Driver I said yes ma'am uh, you mind if we play some music I said yeah go ahead and bluetooth your phone to the, to the radio and she kept talk, trying to tell me about some country singer I don't know about no country singer I, I, I don't know and, and, and they were listening they in the back of the bus I'm, I'm in the front they in the back of the bus and they playing the country music the country singer and I was like okay and then Bruno Mars closed the door came on Ain't nobody come to Time Church with me. They in the back of the bus jamming. I'm in the front of the bus jamming. Ain't, ain't, ain't wasn't nothing wrong with them seeing me by my head. You got to become like them. Make them feel special. You ain't that high that you can't come down. Sister Mary Higgins was the only one that caught joy. Because she dumped me on the first time. Some of y'all spent $20 and $30 trying to dump the pastor. But it was joy being in that dunking booth, letting the kids cheat and run up and just push the button and dump the pastor. Get on their level. Make people feel accepted. Uh-oh, verse number four. Be sensitive to their needs and concerns huh. but by the grace of God I am what I am could have been me outdoors no food no clothes or just another number with a tragic end huh so I say thank you Lord for all you done for me. It could have been me that got, got caught in a house fire. It could have been me that been in a car accident. It could have been me because everybody who homeless ain't dumb. It's some educated people who messed up. It's a lot of educated people who had to quit their job to take care of an aging parent and it took them years to take care of their parents and then when their parents close their eyes it's hard for them to find a job because they got this big gap between their resume. Be sensitive. Now, I got a problem that you beg for your needs and go buy what you want. I'm going to look up at this chandelier. Oh, there's a light out on that one. Got, I fixed that this week. Um, you on Facebook living your best life but you're in my inbox begging me for money. church, work at the funeral home, drive the bus, he got it. I ain't got no child support, I ain't got no bad habits, so I, I, I do what I want to do. There is a time where I become sensitive to people's needs. There's a lot of stuff I do that I don't turn receipts into the church because I don't want the church to cause me to miss my reward. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, they just think we got all this money. Y'all put it out there. We got all this money. We ain't got no money. Huh? That called the church. Voicemail be full of these same calls, same calls, same calls, same people. And I have to ask God sometimes, God, 
Should we? Or should we not? But Deacon Woody, they, they leave their name and I go look at their Facebook page. And the Lord said, uh-uh. I'm trying to tell you, we still got to be concerned, but we got to be cautious. Number five, number five, because y'all looking at me. We got to look for opportunities to tell them about Christ. We get on their level. We come sensitive to them. We talk to them, but then make sure you tell them about Jesus. At least, least let them know. You ain't got to go in the deep Bible study. Tell them the Lord loves you. Have a blessed day. Keep your hair up. Keep on pushing. Look what he says. 24 through 27. I'm, I'm wrapping this thing up. Winning a race requires purpose and discipline. Paul uses this illustration to explain that the Christian life takes hard work, self-denying, and crucial preparation. I ran track, so that means you can't eat every day. You got to discipline yourself. Being the Christian, we have to discipline ourselves. I'm going back to this. That means, can I, I, and I'm going to talk about me, because I, because because it, it's, it's for me, to me, that I don't want to be a castaway. I said, I don't want to be a castaway. And you should want to be a castaway. So that means, here it is, that means that, baby, if you in leadership in the church, you can't be at everybody's house party. You can't be in everybody's face. You, Paul says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That means if you want to do something, go away and do it. Go out of the city. He said, look at him. I, I heard you. You don't need people seeing you. Because here it is. If they see you, you cause them to stumble. Now blood is on your hand. If you go to casino, go to Mississippi. You down there at the shorter exit. Huh? You down there in Atmo. No, everybody's there. Go somewhere where they don't see you. I'm trying to tell you, it takes discipline. You can't let everybody see you. You can't say everybody know who you date. Mm, Y'all getting mad at me already. Date in private till you know it's real. Take your loss in private. Let me keep going because y'all don't like it. <clears throat> As Christians, we are running towards our heavenly reward, the essential discipline of prayer, Bible study, and worship equals us to run with vigilance and stamina. We got to learn how to what? Pray, do the Bible study, and worship. You don't like it. Those are my three points. Prayer, Bible study, and worship. And the reason why you can't come to church and worship because you ain't prayed to have Bible study at home. I'm getting out of here because y'all shutting down on me. Don't merely observe from the grandstand don't just turn out for a couple of jobs, a couple of laps, and then think you got it together. You got to train daily. You got to spend personal time with God daily. You ought to put on your phone a certain time where you have your phone on do not disturb, where you read your Bible, you praying, and you worshiping God. Because the enemy is waiting on you every time you open up your eyes. At times we must give up something good in order to do what God wants. That's hard. You gotta give up something good 
in order to do what God wants. Here it is, and I see my, my exit. When Paul said he might be declared unfit, unordered, to stand aside, a castaway, he did not mean he could lose his salvation, but rather that he could lose his privilege of telling others about Jesus Christ. So, beloved, that's why I'm so secretive, why I'm so private. Ain't that I'm doing wrong, but I don't lose my privilege of telling people about Jesus Christ. Because people always want to bring up what you used to be. Well, I ain't going to church because I know what that person used to do. You are a used to be. And if you ain't a used to be, you will still be. But if you believe that Jesus could change you, then surely he can change anybody. Well, Reverend, you don't come over my house to eat. No, I don't want to be a castaway. Reverend, I don't never see you with nobody. I don't want to be a castaway. Because Deacon Woody, they ain't going to admit it, but if, because they're always one wife behind. Oh, that's his second wife. There go his first wife. And Paul says, whatever you do, don't be a castaway. Paul said it like this, I treat my body hard and make it my slave so that I myself will not be disqualified after I have preached to others. I don't want to preach that other people get saved and then I go to heaven and God says depart from me ain't nobody talking to me I don't want to be living the life that I'm living and I die and I lift my eyes up in hell so Paul says to you and I woe unto us if I preach not the gospel Paul says woe unto you if you don't do what the gift that God has put inside of you. So all I can stop by here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't be a disqualified witness. Don't lose your witness by being in the church 10 years and cause one thing to mess you up. It's sad that you can help a person 99 times and tell them one tell them no one time and they always throw up that one time what about the 99 times I've helped you it's sad because the Bible says in the book of Genesis the spirit doesn't dwell with man always and you're not going to always be in the spirit you may have caught somebody on a wrong day they might have got some bad news might be going through something but you hold that against them and Paul says don't let them make you a castaway so beloved get you somebody that you can talk to somebody that becomes your accountability partner that can hold you up to God's standard notice I didn't say to their standard I said to God's standard and you know what God's standard is God says forgive them seven times 70 which simply means if they offend you forgive them and show them love Paul says I don't want to be a castaway because I want what I do for Jesus to be excellent for the excellency of the gospel and if you don't understand why people act the way they act is because they're trying to live according to the gospel and it's sad that we want to put the preacher on a high standard but guess what you on the same platform as the preacher just because you don't get up every Sunday and declare the word if you a child of God there's no big I and no little use we're all children of the most high God <laughs> and if you find somebody going to 
falling down the Bible says you which are spiritual restore them back up and I got a problem with that you want me to restore you but you can't restore me I got a problem when you get mad at what I say but you turn around and say something worse I got a problem with you try to hold me up here when I'm just trying to be down here I'm just what is called the lead servant all of us are servant of Jesus Christ but the only difference is I'm the lead servant well y'all looking at me let's look at some birds have you ever seen how the birds fly they fly in a V shape there's a lead bird then there's two birds two birds two birds and when the lead bird gets tired it falls down and another bird takes its place and we all on the same we all on the same team the only difference is I ain't tired yet but when I get tired there's another bird getting ready to take my place and I'm looking for somebody who wants to say I'm worthy to be called a child of the king I'm looking for somebody who can say I'm worthy to be on the Lord's side I don't care about my past I don't care what I used to do if God called me I'm worthy every Sunday to sing in the choir I'm worthy every Sunday to play an instrument. I'm worthy every Sunday to be a deacon or a deaconess. I'm worthy every Sunday to sit in God's church because God, he picked me up. What did he do? He turned me around. And I'm looking for somebody who can say, I am, I'm redeemed been born with the price Jesus has changed my whole life if anybody asks you who I am tell them I'm a child of the king I'm looking for somebody who is just like Paul who met this Jesus Paul said I met him on the Damascus road but I met him one Sunday at St. John Missionary Baptist Church 866 Monroe Street I met him for myself he told me if I put my hand in the preacher hand put my trust not in the preacher but put my trust in him he'll hold me he'll rock me and y'all know what for 21 years he been holding me he been rocking me for 21 years I've been telling everybody I am Redeem. I've been telling folks you may be watching but you ain't gonna find nothing you keep on watching keep on looking drive by my house look at my license plate keep on stalking me keep on trying to find something but I promised the Lord that I never let him down I made let you down but I ain't gonna let the Lord down why you ain't gonna let him down cause can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody rock me like Jesus can't nobody hold me like Jesus and I serve a risen savior he walks with me he talks with me he tell me that I am his own anybody here know this man if you're in sin he'll set you free anybody here know what happened on a hill 
called Calvary. Anybody here know what happened on the Via Dolorosa? Anybody here know what happened on the Hill of Skulls? He died. Anybody here know he died? He died to the sun refused to shine. He died to the moon went down in blood. He died to the earth began to reel and rock. Surely, surely he died. But that ain't the end of the story. Early, early, early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. Johnson, why you act like this? I act like this because he got up. I act like this because he loves me. I act like this because when I was at the house party, I two-step, I see walk, I do the duggy shuffle, but when I gave my life to the Lord, I just change dance partners, I just move in a different way, anybody here know the man, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it, sire, sire, and anybody here feel like shouting, anybody here feel like dancing, say it. Don't lose your witness. Paul says, I don't want to be a castaway. All the books I wrote, the churches I found, I don't want to be a castaway. Let them say you're funny acting. Let them say you're different. Let them say it's hard. But you don't want to be a castaway. You've been singing for the Lord. And you get to heaven, God says, I don't care all the singing you do. Bye. You've been a deacon for 30 years and because you acting like how your daddy act, how your granddaddy act, how they act, God says, bye. Paul says, I don't want to be a castaway. And until we understand what that simply means, let me give it to you one more time in the New Century Version because y'all didn't like the King James. I treat my body hard. That means I'm more harder on me. When I wake up from my Sunday nap, I, I watch the sermon all over again. Lamar, why you say that? Lamar, why you do that? I'm more harder on me. And I make my body a slave. I, I, I want to, baby, baby, I want to take you out, but can't do it. Reverend, you want to go to dinner with me? Baby, I would love to go to dinner with you, but I can't. Because I don't want to be a castaway. So then when they're out there, I done did all this preaching. Now I've been disqualified. Because I let one encounter Cause me to be a castaway. Reverend, that sounds like an anniversary sermon. No, it's a it's a sermon for you too. You just gotta put what that your gift is. Your gift, don't you be a castaway that you've been doing all this and you lift up your eyes in hell. Come on, the doors of the church are open.
said amen. amen amen beloved this is the day that we set aside to remember our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ yes we did this on Pentecost Sunday but it's now the first Sunday in June we have made it to the sixth month of a brand new year okay you, you should have shouted because last June you wouldn't have been here but a year later we're here And it's because the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. As we prepare to get our Lord's Supper together, let's start with that course. Oh, it reaches. It reaches to the high yes mountain Lord it flows it flows to the lowest to the lowest oh yeah That gives, me that gives me strength from day, from day to day. day. It, will it will never lose its power. It's power. Come on, come on. Lean your head back. It reaches. 
it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows, it flows to the Lord. Oh yeah. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never It's time. I, one more time, just lean your head all the way back. Oh, it reaches. To the highest It flows To the lowest Oh yeah Lord the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never His Father, we thank you for the blood you shed for us on the hill called Calvary. Now, God, we ask that you search our hearts, search our bodies. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen us. For, Lord, we want to be whole, we want to be right. Father, if there's any sin that we have committed, sins of omission, sins of commission sins of word thought or deed we ask that you forgive us right now father bless my neighbor on my left and my right father bless the fruit of the vine that I may take it worthy bless your body that it may make me whole. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah. Lord, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will, it will, it's power, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ let us bow and eat together the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ let us bow and drink together the scripture said when the supper had ended they left and went to the Mount of Olives and began to sing hymns. Beloved, we don't have a mountain of olives. But we're going to leave out of here on a high note as our officers are coming. Amen. To remember our, his tithes, his offering, and other gifts of love. Amen. Let's remember this Saturday. Amen. Come celebrate. It ain't just about me. It's about us. Amen.
remember the third Sunday, let's send Brother Earl E.J. Johnson out with a bang. He has brought life into this church. Amen. We're going to miss him. Amen. But he's going back towards Florida where he's from. And I, I'm never mad of a man who's trying to get back close to home with his family. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray for him and send him off well. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless those who had and those who had not. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is thy servant prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you want to know. If you want to know. Where. Well. 